The Cooler Master H500P case features two huge and distinctive 200mm RGB fans up front, a tinted tempered glass side panel window, and a vertical GPU mount. With room for 360 rads on the top and front, a tasteful PSU shroud, and helpful cable management covers in the back, the H500P will make your next build both easy and sexy, just like me. Click the link in the description for more. Excellent! Hey, what's up guys, and welcome back to Paul's Hardware. This is my monthly builds video. It is November, as you can maybe tell, and today's monthly builds video is gonna be a little bit different than my usual monthly builds video. For one main thing, I've actually already built my monthly build for this month. It's right here. It is a uh, about a $1,700-ish all AMD build in the new NZXT H400i, and I just posted that video yesterday, so check it out, as well as checking out my builds playlist where you can find all of the builds I've done. As for today, I'm gonna be going over some parts lists. So a quick glance at the parts list for this build, and then I have two other parts lists that I have put together based on your feedback from last month. So uh, the question was what builds you wanna see this month. The answer uh, by about 30% of you was the best gaming PC for $800. Now what I've done is I've made two gaming PCs that are $650 and about $1,150. And I'm gonna talk more theoretically about choosing the parts that go into a build, the general price expectations that you should have, and especially since it's about a week until Black Friday right now, how you should sort of go, go about your thought process when you're choosing parts to put into a new system that you're building right now. And also sort of a challenge, because I'm gonna show you guys the prices I'm looking at, and I have just last night and this morning put together builds that I think are kind of the best bang for your buck uh, at different price points. And let me know if uh, you guys over the next week or so can find some screaming deals with the Black Friday stuff going on and perhaps get these builds or equivalent of these builds for much less money. I think that's very, very possible. So, of course, we're gonna start off with that NZXT H100i build, uh, and then we have the 1150, uh, $1,150 price point, and then we also have the $650 price point, and these are actually tied very closely together. So first off, the H400i build, and this is already assembled, I'm gonna be testing this. This will run you about $1,700-ish, depending on how you buy stuff and where you buy it. Um, it's got an R7 1700 CPU in it, which is an eight core 16 thread processor. You can get for less than $300, 285 on Amazon right now. The Rev2 of the NZXT Kraken X62, uh, which is a 280 millimeter all-in-one liquid cooler. The Rev2 version does have support for the AM4 socket, so you get a brand bracket in there that is compatible, and that was definitely nice to have. Motherboard was only $75, and this is probably, if anything, the weak point in the build. Not that it's a bad motherboard or anything, it's got a very nice set of features, but it's only a $75 motherboard, so when you're looking at an upgrade path, you're probably not gonna have the greatest of power delivery on this motherboard, although you do have two M.2 slots, which is part of the reason why I chose it, as well as four DIMM slots for DDR4. Uh, two M.2 slots is actually really hard to find down in the budget B350 range, but uh, ASRock has several motherboards that have that, which I thought was nice. Now memory is a big challenge right now because it is very overpriced and I ended up going with a Corsair Dominator Platinum kit for this build and that was because the memory that I had on hand actually wasn't working. It wasn't compatible uh, immediately upon installation. So definitely a recommendation to double check uh, uh, the QVL lists, the memory lists that uh, motherboard manufacturers put out to double check that the memory that you're purchasing will be compatible with the motherboard and processor that you choose. You can also check uh, AMD's lists for that as well because they uh, have some lists available uh, on their website. Uh, so with the Corsair Dominator Platinum, there are cheaper uh, 16 gig kicks, kits out there, but this one looks pretty nice and uh, and I had it, so there we go. Toshiba has a new series of uh, SSDs. They're budget oriented, they're, they're called a TR200. Uh, so I had a 480 gig version of that that they sent over, so I dropped that in there. Available in 240, 480, and 960 gig capacities, and the 240, at least right now, uh, is gonna run you about $90. Uh, and I haven't found a price for the 480, but it should be roughly twice that. Moving over to the big ticket item, and the reason why I chose to do an all AMD build was because Vega 56 was actually selling for kind of close to the retail price. So I actually set up a parent filter, which you can use on PC Part Picker to just choose, for instance, a specific type of GPU and see what's available and tell it to just choose the lowest price version. Gigabyte has one for $465 right now. Uh, guys, last week you could find a Vega, 60, a Vega 56 for 400, if not $400, at $420, which is still 20 bucks more than the MSRP. I do not recommend buying a Vega 56 
at $460, $470. At $400 to $420, there's an argument to be made that it is powerful enough to be competitive with the GTX 1070, and even more so if you are planning to buy a FreeSync monitor at the same time because those pair well together. But when you're looking at these expensive prices due to cryptocurrency mining, uh, it just doesn't, it's not practical to buy that for gaming. So for that reason, uh, the builds we're gonna talk about next, I have mainly chosen Nvidia cards because the AMD cards just can't seem to keep their prices down. Moving on though, the NZXT H400i, new case from NZXT. It's a micro ATX case, and that's actually why I had a little bit of a difficult time finding a proper motherboard for this case, but it's $150, definitely a premium, uh, a high-end case, but it does have a very nice set of features, and uh, definitely check out that video if you wanna see me assembling all this stuff in there. Cooler Master 650 watt, 80 plus gold power supply, about 95 bucks, uh, and then three NZXT Air RGB fans, an NZXT Hue Plus LED controller, and an NZXT internal USB hub, rounding things out so I was able to plug in all the fans and use the NZXT cam software to control my lighting and uh, make it kind of fancy and do the uh, marquee effects and stuff. So we'll be following up with a test video on this system, do some more lighting effects, and of course see uh, how the performance is since it is the first all AMD system I've built in quite some time. Let's move on to our next builds, and these should hopefully be a little bit more practical and a little bit more helpful for you guys. I want to address one thing right from the get-go, and that is... Intel. Intel has launched Coffee Lake just recently. It's LGA 1151, but it uses newer chipsets. Uh, Z370 is the chipset that's available uh, on motherboards right now for it. However, those motherboards tend to be a little bit more expensive. There are some budget options in there, but the reason I'm not choosing any Coffee Lake uh, S CPUs or motherboards for these next couple builds that I'm going to show you guys is because of this. Uh, here's the 8400, which is a six core, six thread a CPU and uh, fairly reasonably priced at $199. Just not there. It's not in stock. You can't buy it. So why you can't recommend a CPU you can't buy. The 8600K uh, forces you to pay just the the low low price of 100 extra dollars for the pr uh, the privilege of having your six core CPU unlocked so you can overclock it, which I think is pretty absurd. Uh, so I don't recommend that right now. 300 bucks is just a crazy market for that. Finally, I have the 8700K still selling for $40 to $50 more than what Intel sold us the MSRP was, and doesn't matter anyway because it's still out of stock. So for that reason, my next two builds are going to be AMD-based. AMD-based because there's very viable entry-level quad-core options for them. There's very viable upgrade path on AM4 going from quad-core with four threads all the way up to eight cores and 16 threads. And AMD has promised that AM4 will be a mainstream platform socket for the next couple years at least. We're looking at lifespan through 2020. So there's a fairly reasonable expectation that come the next year or so as AMD is working on Zen 2 stuff, which is still in the rumor phase right now, you might get a CPU in the future that could drop into this. So all that said, here is the $650 budget gaming PC. We've got the quad core, we got a B350 motherboard for 85 bucks. Uh, we got eight gigs of memory, an SSD, a GTX 1063 gig, and then a reasonably priced case and power supply. Now I made a quick pie chart because pie charts are so fun. Just listing the various components here, the seven main components, CPU, motherboard, memory, storage, video card case, and power supply. The price of each one with the $650 build, and then the price of each one with the $1,150 build. So you can look relative to the other parts in the system, how much is being spent on each component. The video card in both systems is gonna be the most expensive part at about $190. That's about 29% uh, of the cost of the $650 build. CPU and cooler is next at $100, 15.2% of the cost. And then beyond that, you're gonna have memory, of course, since memory is still pretty expensive, 16.7% of the cost at $110. Uh, after that, you have motherboard with $85, 12.9%. Storage with $79, 12%, and then power supply and case, both coming in uh, at about seven to seven and a half percent at 45 and $50 each. The system went to sleep over here, so it got a little bit quieter. All right, looking at the $1150 build breakdown here, we can see the video card uh, becomes a larger chunk at 400 bucks, 33.7%. CPU cooler and CPU and cooler, $195, 16.4%. Memory, 14.3%. Storage, 11.8. Motherboard, 11.0. So again, uh, just just sort of keep in mind these general 
comparisons when it comes to how much percentage of the total cost of your system you might be spending on each part. Bear in mind it can fluctuate a bit when you're uh, looking at different price points and especially if you're looking at kind of the bare entry level $650 versus um, something a bit more full featured at $1150 and I will go down the comparisons between these two builds as I get to the next one. So our CPU for the 650 build is the Ryzen 3 1200 and quad core is now budget guys. Keep that in your heads now. Quad core is budget. Quad core with hyper thre threading is clawing its way up out of budget. Six core is more mainstream, but a quad core will fully get you by and it's really nice that you can get a decent quad core from AMD on their current gen platform for $100. Uh, and you gotta pair that with a motherboard, of course, I've chosen the Gigabyte AB350 Gaming 3. Uh, and also, as I'm uh, also showing you guys here, a big way to get a little bit of extra bang for your buck uh, in general, and of course in the holiday season as well, is mail-in rebates. I generally don't include, include those in the overall cost of the system, but this motherboard at $85 also has a $15 mail-in rebate from Newegg, which means that you can get it for as cheap as $70 if you count mail-in rebates, of course. Uh, the things I'm looking for in a B350 motherboard are gonna be four DIMM slots, so you have plenty of space for memory. I'd like to see some kind of cooling going on on the uh, power delivery, and I mean, you can take a closer look at those power delivery phases yourself, maybe in a review on the specific motherboard. I'm not gonna go into that now, but good to have if you're planning on doing a bit of overclocking. And then of course you want at least a few full-size PCI Express slots, so you can have some expansion options down there. Uh, and then beyond that, you have at least one M.2 slot, and this Gigabyte board they've positioned it right below the uh, graphics card slot, which isn't the best position, but at least it is there for expansion. Beyond that, you're usually gonna have roughly the same um, um, configuration otherwise when it comes to SATA connectivity, as well as IO on the back. For memory, my main uh, my main goal is that it's just compatible. It just works and is compatible. So the Corsair Vengeance uh, LPX kit, the 3000 speed is very compatible with AMD. This kit has worked in every single AMD uh, test bed I've set it, I've plugged it into. You can run it at the 2930 three divider easily uh, just by setting the XMP settings and it is 10 or 20 bucks more than other comparable 8 gig 2 by 4 gig kits right now but uh, paying a little bit more for the peace of mind and compatibility is worth it when it comes to storage you're gonna want an SSD that's just I don't recommend getting a cheapo hard drive to install into you're putting your operating system on this Windows probably Windows 10 reformatting it in the future is just kind of a pain in the butt so uh, for entry level, 240 gig, 250 gig is, is the SSD that you're gonna wanna go for. Those will cost you about 79 to $80 right now, uh, sorting by price in this uh, capacity range. They do start to ramp up pretty quickly, but um, generally speaking, a standard SATA SSD, all of the new ones are relatively comparable to each other. So double check a review, of course, this SanDisk SSD Plus version, as well as the SK Hynix that are both down here in the $80 range are both totally fine for you. Uh, and then next, of course, you want that graphics card. Uh, in this parametric filter, I have actually included both three gig and six gig graphics cards. So sorted by price, you can get a GTX 1063 gig for $190, which is, you know, right about where it should be. Uh, and then if you do want to jump up to six gig, the cheapest is $260. So that is a good $70 increase, but you will get some benefit from the six gig. So um, if you're wanting to invest a little bit more money on this build, I would say in, uh, upgrading the graphics card would be a good place to start. Uh, there's the GTX 1060 that I have chosen. It's the small one, uh, but it is of course reasonably priced. Finally, for case and power supply, you should be able to get a very solid Decently appointed case, such as the Cooler Master Masterbox 5. It's got a clear side panel window so you can look in at your build. It's got a painted black interior. It's a solidly built case with good construction, good cable management, routing options. You know, you, there are some benefits and features that you don't get with a $50 case, but this is what you should be looking for. This is totally gonna get you by. Uh, I've worked with this case and it's totally fine. And again, a $10 mail-in rebate will get it uh, for 40 bucks, which is pretty nice. Finally, power supply, 80 plus bronze is what you'd want and 550 watts. You can get away with 500. I like getting a little bit more headroom on my power supply, but you should be able to get something like this from a reputable manufacturer like Corsair or EVGA for about 40 to $45. And again, Man, those mail-in rebates right now. Uh, $20 mail-in rebates, so I knew I could get this as cheap as 25 bucks right now. 
And that's the rundown of my $650 budget gaming PC. So just to reiterate, what I'm going for here is the basic quad core from the AMD Ryzen platform. I'm going for a B350 motherboard with those specs I was looking for. I'm going for an eight gig, two by four gig kit that I know is compatible with Ryzen with a speed of 3000 or better. I'm going for a 240 or 250 gig SSD, a GTX 1063 gig for as cheap as possible, a $50 case with good appointments and features, uh, and you know, take your pick of which one you think looks best, and then a solid 80 plus bronze rated uh, 550 watt power supply. 658.72 if you get these from all the least expensive places. And then again, as I showed you guys, lots of mail and rebates going on right now, so take advantage of those if you want to. Jumping back to my comparison here, and I want to point out the differences in price. So going from 100 to 200 dollars on the 1150 build, we're jumping from a quad core with four threads to a six core 12 thread. So we're tripling our number of threads available for a little less than double the price. And I'd say that's a nice jump up. For the motherboard, we're going full size ATX and I've gone with the X370 chipset. You can still get away with a B350 chipset motherboard for this build uh, and you can save a little bit of money that way. The X370 chipsets uh, motherboards though tend to be a little bit, they tend to be built a little bit better with a little bit better power delivery. So potentially better overclocking and maybe some better features. More on that in just a second. For memory, I've jumped from two by four gigs to two by eight gigs, and uh, it's not quite double in price, about $60 more, so you're getting more gigs per dollar if you can afford to go with the two by eight gig kit. For storage, I'm going from 240 to 480, uh, double the storage, less than double the price. For the video card, we're going from a 1063 gig all the way up to a GTX 1070 full fat eight gig. Uh, and that is a very nice upgrade in GPU performance. Case, we're just increasing the price by about 30 bucks for a nicer case with some better features and the power supply, again, just jumping up by about uh, 25-ish dollars to get ourselves an 80 plus gold rated unit. So here is what those price increases have gotten us. And uh, total price listed here with all of the cheapest prices from PC Part Picker is 1,183.28. Again, big jump in CPU core processing performance going up to that six core. And AMD is nice enough to give you simultaneous multi-threading on their six core uh, Ryzen 5 processors. So you get six cores and 12 threads for the low, low price of just under $200 overclockable, comes with a very decent CPU cooler in the box, so uh, I really like that for value, the Ryzen uh, 5 1600. Uh, for motherboard, we have the X370 Gaming X. Uh, this is another ASRock motherboard, and I chose this one mainly because it's got a pretty decent sale going on for about $130 from Superbiz. Uh, you can also get it for about that same price from Newegg, uh, but that's using a mail-in rebates. And uh, this motherboard got some very positive reviews. You can see from the reviews here on Newegg, uh, it's got some pretty, uh, a pretty decently upgraded power delivery configuration. It's a 12 phase uh, power delivery set. Granted the phases aren't everything, but this is definitely built a lot better than a lot of those B350 boards I was looking for. Beyond that, looking for the same specs, four dim slots, of course. Nice to have a little bit of RGB lighting. Not, of course, a key selling point, but hey, it's there. And then here, since we are upgrading the board and spending a bit more money, we've got some other features such as a couple RGB headers on there, but more functionally speaking, two M.2 slots on this board, one down here and one up here. Also, X370 will allow you to do two-way GPU configurations. Uh, that's Again, not very practical, but uh, it is it is there now. Uh, for the memory, again, just uh, doubled the capacity, so went from a two by eight gig or two by four gig kit to two by eight gigs. Uh, so you can again get by with two by four gigs with this same build. So the idea with me going with the 650 build and the 1150 build, if I didn't make this clear enough, was take anything from the 650 build and kind of swap in stuff from the more expensive build and you can kind of get yourself into the middle there um, with whatever parts you might think are more important to you than others. But um, I did the sort by price here with the parametric filter again for Corsair kits that are DD DDR3000. 3200 and you can get you can save 15 or 20 bucks by going with the uh, the blue kit um, And you know, maybe just paint it or something like that. It's the same memory inside. It's just blue Anyway, uh, fi figure that out whether or not you care about aesthetics or not again the same uh, Parametric filter here for the SSD just I'm looking for 300 to 600 gig range rather than the down in the 250 gig range and here we can see uh, the prices uh, are much more reasonable with SSDs this capacity, um, when you're comparing it to spending say 90 bucks on a 240 gig, it's not that much to upgrade to this. Uh, you, if you sort by price per gigabyte right over here, you can actually see 
uh, where you get the best deal. So the W, the Western Digital 500 gig SSD is a great deal right now for 140 bucks. Maybe consider that one. Uh, and then of course, video card, we wanted a GTX 1070. We want the cheapest GTX 1070. You got a Zotac and a Gigabyte, both mini versions available down here. And then uh, maybe consider some of these other options if you wanna spend a little bit more money, if you want a, a beefier cooler or something like that. But don't spend too much more. Even the uh, mini versions, you can still overclock and there's not really a whole lot of variance between the uh, max speed you can get. Case, of course, we gotta have a case and power supply. I think $80 is a good budget for a case in this range. And for 80 bucks, I think the uh, Fantex P400 is a fine option. Again, you got some RGB lighting options that are in there. Solid builds, uh, you got tempered glass, uh, USB 3.0. So a lot of those uh, kind of blingy nice features. Uh, and a case I've worked with and is super easy to build in. A good case by Fantex. There's other $80 case options there too. Um, as, long, as long as they're full-size ATX, then uh, you know choose whatever one you think looks prettiest. Finally, we are paying another 20-ish dollars for a more premium power supply. 80 plus gold rated rather than bronze means we'll have a little bit uh, cheaper power bill with this power supply. And 650 watt gives us a little bit more headroom for upgrade options in the future, whether you're talking about adding drives, uh, or adding, I guess mainly adding drives or upgrading to possibly a more power hungry graphics card. And those are my builds for November 2017. I hope you guys have learned a little bit uh, about choosing the parts for your system because I know it can be a challenging process, especially now that there's mainstream and enthusiasts on the Intel and AMD sides. There's just so many choices around right now. But guys, if any of you use this as a template to build yourselves a new PC this holiday season, I would love to hear about that in the comment section down below. I don't have a feedback straw poll for this month because I think what I'm gonna do for next month towards the beginning of December is kind of do the same the same MO that I did right now. Give you guys sort of general guidelines for parting out a system, but we'll do it after Black Friday rather than before. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Hit the thumbs up button if you did enjoy it, and we'll see you guys next time.